All right, good evening, makers. Welcome back to another live stream. It is great to have you guys here tonight. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we absolutely are pumped to do this build this evening. Uh, if you are watching, thank you. Say hi in the chat. Let us know your questions, your comments. That's the whole reason why we do this. So we are excited you are here. And we've got some people saying hello in the chat already. Axel, hey, Gordon, nice to hear from you again. Uh, great stopping by. Leanna and uh, new person here, thanks for joining us. Um, everybody, I am Dave. Uh, so glad to meet you or see you again. And we've got also Jake. He's on the microphone in the chat. Hello, everybody. Good to be back for another live stream. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Yeah, last week we had our first MakerPie build live uh, where Jake made a monitor stand, and I was pretty jealous. Now I get my crack at it. I get to uh, build on stream live with you guys tonight, and I'm really pumped about it. Uh, so I want to... Oh, Gordon's saying hi to Kelly, too. But I'm, I'm really pumped to build it. We've got a really cool build uh, to tackle this evening. You know, we've got this desktop, you know, I'll... I'll we don't have much room here, uh, but we've, we're confined by a desktop for right now. So we're really kind of, you know, thinking, okay, what can we build just on a single desktop? And I've had this plant kicking around. I've had this plant kicking around on uh, various kitchen, <laughs> kitchen tables uh, for the longest time. And I really want to make a stand. I've been seeing these stands uh, online that I think would be cool at a pipe. And uh, I'm going to try and make a stand out of it on the desktop. But yeah, let's take a look. I've got some inspiration in and in pictures uh, that I want to bring up. Here's, here's some ones that I've been seeing. You probably have seen these as well. Uh, but check these copper pipe stands out. This is a really cool one here. Oh, get me out of the way. Um, but yeah, you've probably seen this, just a small, um, not too high pipe stand. This one's made out of copper pipe, really cool. I love this design in the middle, this 4T design. And it's got four posts, uh, so that's really cool. And then I've also seen a bunch of them out of wood too. Let me go back to planter stand. Let's see if we can, yeah. I mean, th these are pretty common. You see these a lot, but I love the design. It, it, it's a nice modern design. I think it's cool. It lends itself to pipe. I mean, you can pick these up really inexpensive, but I think it'd be cool to, to make it tonight and uh, exactly to our specifications. So uh, I, want some, I want some input from you guys though. Let's pick how we're gonna do this. Uh, you would think, I mean, for my first one, maybe I should just, you know, <laughs> go with a home run. Uh, but we're going to throw a wild card in there and let you guys pick which design uh, I go for and how we build it. So let's do, um, hey, Morgan, she's joining us in the chat. So let's say this is kind of the simple um, version that we could do with a, a cross. And how I'm thinking of doing that one is possibly doing with a 180 in the middle and then running a cross pipe just like that. So you can imagine a, a cross pipe coming out of here and that forms the base of the planter. So that's option A. Or option B was the one I showed a second ago that was, let me get back to here. Option B was a pipe planter stand. With this sort of design, these, these four T's. Uh, so I wanna hear from you guys, which, which way should I build it? Uh, should I build it a totally different way? Uh, let me know, what do you guys think? How should we go about this? I think that that design's pretty cool, the way it kind of fans out. I mean, they both kind of end up in the same 
you know they have the the verticals around the planter right um but just from a design standpoint that's pretty cool the way it the way it looks yeah i think that's neat um that would be a little bit more difficult but i think we can do it and i'm just looking at pvc pipe stands because that popped up as well plant stands excuse me and you've got all all kinds of different ones some tiered, some shelving, lower ones. I don't see too many of the style that we're thinking about. And we got three votes for option B so far. Option B, mm -hmm. four T's, says Gordon. Kelly, Morgan, okay. All right, who else? What else do you guys think? I forgot which, <laughs> I forgot which option was option B. Option B was the four T's. The four T's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Right now, that's the, that's the leader. Okay. Well, that's What else we got? We got any other votes? Oh, Popeye's in the chat. Welcome Popeye. He wants to do I wants to see option A since he said you can't really see the base but since you can't see that part of it. Right. He's, he's thinking maybe just keep it simple. I like where Popeye's heads at. But I'm willing to do whatever. Axel's also saying option A like we're neck and neck we're neck and neck so this is this is what i've got for the the base too so we had the planter it's been on uh our our kitchen table for a long time and then um the the thing that went under it the catch-all like the the pan wasn't quite right so i made a pan specifically for this and uh i've got this right here that'll catch the water and excess but this is a coffee tin so uh, we found this. It's just a regular old coffee tin with a little bit of sign vinyl wrapped around it. But again, it's not going to get a lot of looks, but I think it came out pretty good. It'll definitely do the trick of catching the water. I think it really panned out. <laughs> oh. You get a laughter for that one. That was good. All right, so we, what, what do we got here? We got, we got three for B and two for A. Can I get any other votes? I it's wish I could do the auction voice, the, you know, the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, B it is. I think that's what, that's what the vote is. How are the cookies? Yeah, gone, right? Sam's Choice Butter Cookies, they were good. But yeah, they're gone. So, Aaron's in the chat. He also said B. So I think that's the nail in the coffin for option B. Aaron looks a little bit more stable. So yeah. Okay, Aaron, thank you for that vote and welcome to the chat. And thanks everybody for uh, for voting there, getting a little interaction. This is what this is all about. So uh, I appreciate you getting on your keyboards and and uh, sending us some some messages there because this is what this is all about. So. All right, we will go with this design here um, using four T's and four T's in the middle. That's my strategy. Let me show that. I've got some T's laid out here. All right, so um, these are T connectors. If you guys aren't familiar with them, it connects two pipes, one across and one down. So it's kind of that that style I'll switch to the overhead so let's see they've really got to just go like this and then that so that is about as close as I'm going to be able to get them together because this is part of the pipe so we got that get the keyboard out of the way and we know that I'm going to just pull some dimensions. We'll dimension this thing out to see. Okay, so that's like, that's two and a half to, can't quite see that, but you'll have to trust me. That's two and a half to the edge of this connector. And then whatever else we need on that stub. And, and I can, if you can imagine, there's going to be four stubs fanning out and going to that, to the outside verticals. Right, so four stubs. I don't know how that works with copper connectors there. It looks yeah. almost like it's welded. 
Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's the the normal thing is to solder those ah. copper joints, uh, which would make a really sturdy stand out of copper. Definitely cool. Uh, we'll, but we're going to do it out of out of EMT conduit tonight. So I've got some EMT conduit ready to cut, and some other connectors and things. But figuring out the sizes here. Um, all right, so wait, I know I got to make four stubs in each one of those uh, to bring out to the verticals. The question is how how big does that need to be? And then uh, how high does the verticals have to be? Because I've got some more tees here and just laying it out, we'll do one of these over here and then over here and these will attach to the verticals and make the whole planner. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I'm just I was just asking the chat how they uh how confident they are in your skills. They were really nice with me building last week and they were really confident in me, so yeah. I'm sure they're gonna share the love with you as well. Can I do it? Can we pull this off on stream? You know, because building this thing is one thing, right? In the privacy of your own home. But uh I've got to admit I'm a little nervous. I don't know how it's gonna go on live stream. Last time we had some uh challenges with uh, the inserts, getting them in. I had to help Jake out, but I know he's got my back. Yep, I'm here. I'm ready to jump into action and cut pipes like you helped me cut pipes. Right on. Appreciate that. Okay, so that's the, the layout as far as the... Thanks, Axel. He brought his cheat sheet. Oh, man. He Papa caught me, dude. Do it. He caught me. That's oh, right. Oh. Now i got to disclose what... <laughs> I, I've got some dimensions here. Uh, but truth be told, these are for the other design, so you know you can cross that out. Yeah, you kind of threw a curveball in because when I talked to you last, I was getting the connectors for you earlier before we left the shop, and yeah, was not expecting this design. I'm glad I grabbed some extra connectors. <laughs> right, a spreadsheet. Um, definitely, I need a spreadsheet. We've got grid paper. I mean, grid paper is almost spreadsheet. Uh, it's in the same ballpark. And then I've got some say hello, <laughs> introduce Jake. So these are my uh, notes. But the <laughs> the size I'm going for, let's let's do that. All right, get these out of the way, <laughs> and then let's check out the size of the plant. Gordon said you can do it one-handed. Oh, <laughs> uh, Gordon, thanks for the challenge. Let's ease into that one. We're still getting new at this live stream thing. Okay, so here's the plant. And it's looking to be, it's about eight and a half uh, in diameter on the top. And, and that's the note I took before was nine inches on the inside. We've also got our, our cookie tin. That is seven and a half right there. Hope you guys can see that okay. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like nine will do it. We'll have a little bit of wiggle room. Hopefully, we'll be able to hit that. Um, and just do a, that's one of the notes I had, nine inches on the inside. Oh, and then we need to figure out the height, too. So, let's see how we're going to show this. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good view of it. Okay, so... From table to top is, we're dealing with seven inches. And then we got the one inch for the conduit that'll support it underneath. And then we've got to figure out what's this going to be sitting off of the table. Um, so what do you guys think? A couple inches, three inches maybe, four inches. We want it to be pretty low, um, but just get it off the table. So let's say uh, seven inches for that, one, inches for one inch for the conduit underneath it, and then three more. So seven plus four in total, if I'm, that's 11. Mechanisms 2C is back. He said, uh, welcome back, first of all. And then he said, computers work good too for notes. <laughs> <laughs> true, very true. And Kelly says spreadsheets are your favorite. They are my favorite. I'll have to say Dave excels with spreadsheets. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. How, how could I do a spreadsheet real quick? Let me see if I can jump in a spreadsheet here. I, I, we're going to bail on the spreadsheet. I got my... I got my yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do old school for now. Yeah, old school for now. Okay, so um, we've got 7 inches plus 4. That's 11 inches vertical. Eleven inches vertical, right there, and then we got to figure out the other. So I'm going to need four eleven-inch pipes for sure. And then I was looking at so one of this thing popped up. I don't know if I can get it there, but it was uh, we were doing trigonometry. They had trigonometry on trying to huh. figure out. Oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah, what the <laughs> distance is. Do we have any math math pros in here? Math a, teachers. Need we need our friend Blake. Okay, yeah, next time on Excel. Popeye said we need to get a bigger a thing of cookies next time. I, I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to eat the cookies first before <laughs> making the planter. Right. Okay, so... But let's let's get uh, let's get real here. We need to figure out how to do this whole thing. So, do we have any trig experts in the stream tonight? I mean, it seems like they would be proportionate from all sides, right? So you just uh, do the same length, the four fans, the four pipes that fan out. I mean, I'm well, yeah, all of them are going to be the same, mm -hmm. right? But how? How big do they need to make a nine inch radius? So no one's stepping up to really get. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, because it's not exactly across. You get a little bit more. Uh, and we want to go from here to here. We want nine inches. Hmm. So I could just mock it up. This is going to be pretty dense as far as connectors go. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a good amount of T's in a short amount of area. Eight feet. X said A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Right. So we got the formula, at least. Okay, nine. So let's see if we can do this on the fly. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's find an open page in my book. Okay. See how math does on the stream. <laughs> if we're going, uh, all right. So C squared, C is our distance from here to here, which we want to be nine inches because mm -hmm. that's the the size. And then A and B, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're solving for two variables think boy would you not do elena said <laughs> they're an engineer but they just build and use <laughs> a saw to take off the extra that's a pretty good tip <laughs> yeah that's that's the best that's better than probably <laughs> doing the math for us right yeah i, th I think just wing it and, and we're in trouble because i'm not even an engineer so uh, if if she doesn't have, or he. Um, okay, so now I'm going to give this a college try, if you guys can bear with me. So the the distance between these two is right here. That is, I'm going to say, center of the pipe to center of the pipe. That's uh, three and a quarter, 3.25 inches. So then we can solve for B. Okay. Axles. Oh, boy. Square root of A squared. Let's see what we got here. We're going to go scientific. <laughs> you know, it gets real whenever you tilt the iPhone over. Right. 
Okay, so we know um, nine square. I, I apologize, everybody, for doing this kind of stuff on the live stream. In retrospect, I didn't know a plant stand was going to be so <laughs> entailed. Right, that I we were going to do all this. Okay, Axel, you got. I'm just a mechanical. We just need to give Axel the measurements. <laughs> okay, so he's saying square root of a squared square root of C and then minus <laughs> wow <laughs> okay I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna just wing it here because we can't I, I'm, <laughs> we're gonna lose everybody <laughs> in here all right so I'm gonna do one kind of we're gonna go nine square root that's three and then um three point two five squared is ten point five six so nope that doesn't make sense nine squared oh boy this is that m moment you know you shouldn't have tried <laughs> calculus. 81. So that's, uh, oh boy, 81 minus 10.56, <laughs> and then square root. This is going 8.39. That sounds like a reasonable number. Yeah, everybody's bailing on that. <laughs> I don't blame you guys, but I got B is, uh, yeah, I, I definitely didn't do that right. Okay. Sorry. We're just going to, just going to cut whatever's excess. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> We're doing Gordon, it like Gordon said, or you can switch to option A. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gordon, we can't bail. We are committed. All right. So I'm going to just do this. We're going to. We're gonna make those stubs three and a half inches. So we got, oh boy. All right, we've got four times 11 inches and then four times 3.5. Wow, okay, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, that's the last time we're doing calculus <laughs> on the live stream without our, our buddy Blake. Um, all right, so there we go. Let's cut some pipe and see where we're at. I'm going to cut the stubs first because that's, that's interesting. Okay, so we had to do the something similar whenever we were doing the trebuchet video. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so that's three and a half, seven, and then ten and a half, another half, and fourteen. Okay, there's our four stubs. Let's give that a try. It's good to see Morgan in, the, or well, Morgan in the chat, but Gordon in the chat. Gordon, uh, we go ways back. He's been around since the beginning of Maker Pipe in Maker Fair. So, Gordon, great to have you here. All right, I've got my trusty Milwaukee portable bandsaw up on the table, all charged and ready to go. Hey, Warren is back from vacation. Hey, Warren. Great to have you back. You just missed a, uh, a thrilling <laughs> Pythagorean <laughs> theorem discussion. Okay, so we're going cam one. No, we'll go overhead. Okay, here we go. How's that sound? It's not too bad. At least I don't, well, not for me. Let us know if that's too loud or anything. In case you don't know, Dave is using this Milwaukee um, portable bandsaw. I used that last week in the live stream, and uh, we did a, actually we did a full full review on it. 
super handy for, especially like this, you know, we're trying to build quickly. So making those qu cuts really quickly is uh, helpful. And it's really good for that. Okay. That worked out. Okay, we've got our four stubs. Let me just grab something to wipe this off with. You want me to start? You mean to cut the other pipes while you're uh, starting to assemble those together? No. Okay. Kay. He is doing it solo. We got. That's the only problem, as we said last time. You got all these little shavings. Yeah, they'd like to build up on the desk. But I've got that. All right. All right. We got walnuts and wine berries jumped in just in time for the math. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. All right, so now we, let's put together this interesting part here. We've got our four stubs, three and a half. We got there by guessing, so we abandoned the math. And then let's put these together. So. That's going to go there. We'll put this is a little a little tricky. Right there, right there. And then that one there. Okay. So that's the the design that we're looking to make. And I I, I was thinking of wrapping this. I got black wrap here. But because this conduit is just going to be inside of the connectors, you know, what's the point? So let's save that and uh, see how this turns out. So um, I've got a bunch of connectors here. And I'm pretty much just center that in there. So one side will grab onto one, one side will grab onto the other. I've got wrench here as well, one of the ball end wrenches and a bag of hardware. This is how our hardware usually comes. Okay. Stuff everywhere already. Is this how this was for you, Jake? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's going pretty good. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, oh <laughs> Popeye. Yeah, good call. Popeye's saying, uh, of course, I'm wearing my eye protection. Just out of frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just out of frame. But thanks for reminding me about that. All right, we've got center, put these bolts in, center it up right there. And then I'll kind of cinch everything down afterwards and then once that's good then we'll work on the the verticals uh, but i hope everybody had good fourth of july and everybody's doing good hopefully we aren't doing this on a desk this whole time i love building live this is really a lot of fun because it is a challenge. And I hope you guys like checking this out. If you've, if you've got ideas on what we could build live, if there's something you want to see specifically, definitely let us know. I'm open to suggestions. Okay, that, um, that looks like something. Well, of course, it's loose. Right, but that's what we've got so far. Four T's, which would make a good base, I think, for oh. it's gonna m definitely make a good base for the planter. Because I was worried that the um the planter base wasn't gonna be big enough. Because we had it on like a plate, which had a really small center. And, but this is, I think, going to be a good design. And just in case somebody's coming in fresh, we're working on a planter stand uh, to hold like a, a tabletop plant. Right. One of these jobs right here. Let's not show that math anymore. <laughs> so 
little bit off. Okay, it tweaks a little bit, but just want to make sure it sits pretty flat before I tighten it down all the way. Because this is what the planter's going to sit on. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now let's tighten it down all the way. Okay, now that we got the center part, that's looking pretty close to the original design. That one was a lot bigger though. I mean, that had a bigger stub, but also the, okay, the connectors are bigger on here than just soldered together copper pipe. But yeah, okay, so now we've got to branch off into the verticals. And boy, do I hope that this is going to be the right size. But it's easy to change if it's not, but I'm going to do a, a quick little test here. So if these were totally against the other connectors, so you don't see any pipe, how much, what's that inside going to be? Let's check that out real quick because we can test that. Okay. So imagine the verticals are right here. And what's that distance between here and here? Is it going to be nine inches. Let's see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. It is really close. It's super close. It's like just shy of nine inches. So nice. hey. as planned, <laughs> as <laughs> planned with the, we were just, we were just adding a little suspense to the live stream. No, we had no idea what we were doing <laughs> with that math. I mean, I there was a time. There was a time where I could do that. Well, probably not in the live setting. It's probably a lot. Um. Did you learn the Pythagorean theorem? Oh boy! Oh, I, I, I just took college algebra. Like, I guess it's not necessarily in college algebra. Well, we should see. stop talking about it. Yeah, probably so. What what should we talk about while I'm doing this? Uh, Ken wants to know if uh, he say saw something similar um, products a while ago. I was wondering um, if you had reinvented some lost art or patent. Oh well, uh, as far as oh the connectors, mm -hmm. oh the connectors, um, yeah. There, there's other connectors uh, like these um, that uh, you know we certainly didn't come up with the connectors. Uh, I our, I think of our contribution as making them for electrical conduit. Um, there's some other systems. You have to buy proprietary pipe. It's hard to get, but electrical conduit, it's local. You can pick it up. So that's kind of our contribution to the whole deal. So I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, that, that looks like the base. That's a lot of connectors. It I mean, eight T's. Eight T's. Um, but it's going to be. A killer surface. Let's get that sits great. Yeah, that'll be just about perfect. Yeah, and then okay. So I said eleven for the verticals. Mm -hmm. So let's cut those. Clean up just slightly. Morgan said, uh, "Cell phone stand if it hasn't been done before for higher angles." Oh. Right on. Yeah, that, that would be cool. We'll definitely put that on the list. Thanks, Morgan. Appreciate that that input. Uh, all right. So let's, we said 11 inches for cutting the verticals. Get this out of the way. And then we will mark those off and cut them. Eleven inches there. We've got a variety of different conduit too. We've got some new core conduit right here, some uh, 
this kind with the, the inch marks. So I've only seen a few types of conduit, but that one, you guys have probably seen, it has the inch marks there, the silver slick. I was reading about the inch marks today because I was thinking about like if you could do a build only using those rather than cutting, or like, uh, sorry, rather than measuring with like a tape measure, just using the inch marks. Right. But I don't think that's what they're there for. No? I think they're there for bending, which is interesting to me. Well, uh, yeah, but, I mean, an inch mark is an inch mark, right? I mean... But, like, they don't line up with the tape measure. When you put a tape measure to it, they really? don't line up with, like... I mean, of course, they line up somewhere, but not, like, okay, every six inches, here's a mark. It's really hit or miss, and I think it has to do a lot with bending. No kidding. You're blowing my mind here, Jake. <laughs> I feel like we've got to test this. Is anyone else... Aware of this? Yeah, any any conduit trades people in the chat? Well, Kelly wants to know some tips for cutting. Wait, I I mean, okay, I'm seeing what you're talking about. Like they're not exactly one inch apart. Right, and that's what I was confused about, and that's why I started researching because I I was gonna try to do like I thought it would be a fun build, um, to you know, not use a tape measure. See yeah. if I could only use a hex wrench and a cutter. But yeah. wow. Yeah, check this out. I mean, I'm curious about this, but and I don't know if I can do a good job of showing you guys, but if you line up the Your one picture in picture is blocking it. There you go. If you're lining up the one, the look at the four, and then that mark is a little bit past the four. You would imagine that those two would line up. No kidding. Jake, that is some... Dropping some knowledge bombs on you. Yeah. <laughs> All this time, I thought they were exactly an inch. So, hey, that's a that's some good advice, at least for people to know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ken said allied, allied kind of will not have the inch marks. Allied, right. Mm -hmm. I've also heard a, a Wheatland tube. Let me make some great conduit, too. But let's be honest, it's whatever you can get, whatever your local store is. Kelly said uh, maybe mention how the include the connectors when building. Maybe you could like the three and a half kind of show how you came up with that for the stubs there. That was math. So like the connectors, the conduit doesn't go all the way to the end, of course. So there's a little bit of a gap from the end of the connector all the way to where the conduit stops, uh, it's about two inches. So that's why he cut them you know, three and a half inches so he could run the T-connectors off and um, have them engaged properly in the connectors. And Popeye has a good tip for cutting. Working with kids, always deburr the inside of the pipe regardless of what method. Um, Little fingers almost always poke inside. And that's a that's a good tip too. Especially you can use the um, the inserts, uh, not the inserts. Sorry, the the plastic end caps. That's another helpful tip. You still want to deburr, but on top of that, you can add end caps. They they engage pretty well and a nice little protector. Um, David wants to know if we have the part number on the conduit. Is that sticker any count on that piece of conduit there? It's probably eaten up by the connect or by the saw. Uh, New core. Ten by. Oh, oh, there we go. It's pretty beat up. Yeah. I don't ten see by that. three quarter. Ten foot long. Three quarter inch EMT conduit. Uh, we got an issue number. We'll bring it up. might have uh i think he's talking about the inch marks like if it has something to do with or i think figuring out exactly what the inch marks have to do with because I, I, that really i don't know if anybody else is just blown away but you know it was very interesting to me because i just always assumed but i think it has something to do with maybe offsets because you know tradesmen electricians when they do boxes and houses and stuff well i guess not always houses but commercial stuff like that i guess i think the offsets um a big reason for that. 
Yeah, let's pop in here. So it's um, specifically inch mark. Oh, what did I just say? I cut off the the part that we needed. Slick. Let's it's a slick line. Let's see. Um, yeah, inch mark it, electrical it says like why that's from Nucor, which is a, a metal foundry. You see, like that, like if you go up to that picture, that thumbnail, I think that was like I think the offset, I think, is something about bending. Yeah, I think it has something to do with the bending and offsets. Um, could be wrong. Any trade silver slick, no. Silver slick. Sorry about that. Silver slick conduit. Okay, it's coming up new core again. So let's look at Lowe's. No. How much is this going for? Oh, gosh, it's going up. Um. Somebody's selling it used. That's how I'd love to buy it. Yeah, I want to make a video on tips for finding used kind of. There's got to be resources pretty readily available for picking up used uh, used conduit. Okay, here we go. Republic conduit, and then this is the the brand name I'm guessing, and uh, by Maverick Tube Corporation. Inch marked. So yeah, if you want to. Popeye wanna said shrinkage when bending. Okay. All right. Yeah, if somebody wants to get back, uh, and we'll, we'll definitely have an answer for that because that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Back. Right, the final four pipes. Oh, gosh. All right. So we've got, yeah. 11 inches, which if I remember right, it's uh, seven inches that's gonna be up above the planter, an inch for the connectors, and then uh, three inches below that sitting off the table. And we do have, we've got some rubber feet uh, for the bottom. Protect the counter there, rubber feet. These are seven eighths inch chair leg feet, rubber feet, you can get those locally or we have them on the site. And then I've also got some end caps that plug into the end of conduit uh, that we'll use on the top. But I'm thinking that definitely want to wrap these because with all the black connectors, the wrap will look good. So I've got some black shrink wrap here. Let me use some stuff we've already opened. There's a lot of talk in the chat about deburring conduit. Uh, so Popeye originally said, always deburr the inside, um, just in case kids, you know, kids like to poke around in case they accidentally hit the inside of conduit. It's not deburred. Um, so we were talking about in caps, putting in caps on there is a good option. Right. And also deburring. And Gordon suggested uh, Ideal and DeWalt have some deburring tools for EMT that attach to the drill and driver. Yeah. Thanks, Gordon, for that and Popeye. And you're right, little, I mean, first thing my daughter wants to do is put, uh, <laughs> you know, nuts and bolts and her fingers down in the conduit. So that is solid advice. Thank you. And, um, yeah, check out those deburring tools that Gordon was talking about. I also asked if anybody has found conduit used locally. And Axe had, uh, he said that Habitat for Humanity actually resells, their resale stores have used construction materials. So that's that's a really cool tip. Nice. That's a good place to look. Yeah, I wonder how much they get that in. But it'd be great. I mean, think of all the conduit that probably gets discarded. Oh, for sure. All right, we are. I'm just putting the shrink tubing over and leaving a little bit at the ends. And then we'll just shrink it on, protect the ends. 
kind of want to crinkle it a little bit to put it in and then use something. Yeah, speaking of D-Bird conduit. And last one here. Nice. Elena said she finds used conduit on Facebook Marketplace all the time. That'd be great to have a, an alert set up. Oh, yeah. Just when uh, you can do that, right? On Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I know you can do it on Craigslist. I mean, I guess Facebook does that for you. Mm -hmm. Or you put in a search. Right. Their algorithm. Okay. So we've got that cut. We've got our four pipes with loose shrink wrap with a little bit extra there on the end. So now I'm going to grab a heat gun and just shrink this on. is uh heat gun inexpensive uh, hair driver hair dryer just doesn't do it um but this does and i'm going to mute just for a second don't want to get the heat gun asmr <laughs> what have you guys anybody used shrink wrap and used a heat gun um in their project I, I've, s I've seen i think harbor freight has a pretty good price like if you were just using it you know one one or two builds or something i think harbor freight has a pretty cheap and we'll have to do a review on the different different ones is there a better better option i think it's pretty cheap but yeah warren that's a good idea would be cool how to watch what's up sorry excuse me how is that sound it doesn't okay? sound bad for me through the headphones but okay um but yeah warren said he'd like to see a an See us build an L-shaped office desk. And oh yeah, wow! We we uh, we're really excited to to kind of move up to the bigger builds and kind of move the the live streaming equipment and kind of set up downstairs so we're able to able to do that. But that'd be great to do full size builds like that. Yeah, is that something you're thinking about building? An office desk. Just curious. And Axe said he got two 10-foot pieces of pipe for $5. That's a deal. Habitat for Humanity. That's that's great. Oh, nice. Well, I assume that's at Habitat for Humanity. Axel, thanks for sharing that tip. We, we promise we won't go to the Seneca one. Yeah, we're not going to steal your supplies <laughs> since you uh, shared that tip with us. Popeye said, just Google used conduit, and in two days you'll see all kinds of ads on Facebook for it. So... <laughs> That and maker pipe, possibly. Right. <laughs> How did you guys run across us? I'm I'm curious. Oh yeah, that's a good in question. In the chat, I'd like to know. Just uh, if you remember, let us know in the chat how you came across maker pipe. I can probably guess for Axel. I would say that he found us when searching for a kayak cart. He probably saw Nancy's community post. That's just my guess. I don't know. You have to let me know if that's a good guess or not. But if I had to make an educated guess because axel's doing some really cool stuff with uh axels over on his channel ax maniac uh, he's building a rotating seat that can move and the seat rotates and it's easily movable because the the seat is freestanding based with the conduit stand so really cool stuff and warren said um it's been on his mind lately to build an l-shaped desk cool yeah that'd be great i was I was in Staples today looking at desks, thinking we need to up our desk game with some maker pipe desks. Yeah, I think we should try to build a a sitting desk that we can easily change to a standing desk. I think that's a, that would be a popular one. Ah, uh, right on, Gordon. Kickstarter. Yeah, appreciate all the support, man. Oh, Axel said, yes, Jake. He found us do searching for... Kayak cart solutions. Gordon, when is when are we going to see another Maker Fair? When when are they going to make a comeback? Do you think it's possible? Think it's going to happen? You you were in the know a lot of the time. Love those in person events. I can't wait to to go to more in person events. Now that they're having them, I saw there's some small ones popping up. Um. Yep, we were talking to somebody from uh, 
Make 48 that runs a maker competition over 48 hours. It's a cool thing about going to that. Uh, but what other events do you guys like? In-person maker events. Okay. I think we've got it. Um, shrunk that on. And now we've got our four pieces of conduit. I noticed there were... Oh, we might... Uh, we might need to use the heat gun again, but I'm not sure. Okay, so... Um, Don't forget to remove the bands. Oh, yeah. Good. So I got shrink wrap on the connect, on the pipe, and that rope, wrong one. I've got shrink wrap on the pipe, so we got to take the shrink wrap off the connectors. And that is just to size the connectors right. when you're using shrink wrap. Okay, so we got those off. Um, well, I might as well put them on too. Just got to get the right spot. So I said seven inches from the top or three inches from the other side. Wish I had some tape. That would be helpful. Blue masking tape? Yeah, instead of black on black. Let's see if I can find some up here. No, it's cool. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. I can, I can see the that enough. Popeye said he found us. He googled conduit connectors when he was figuring out how to use something more rigid than PVC for his boat cover support. Nice. Been working out great using minimal pipe and connectors to put it up and down. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, Popeye is a really, really good. He used a lot of bins in that. It's a really cool build. Right. I think he used some Vimini connectors, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Was that or? Maybe not. Maybe that was a different one with the the fishing rod holders. Yeah, that was different. But Popeye did the um, the winterizing cover uh, that kind of had a, a middle backbone to it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Popeye, but if I remember your Gor – Gordon was saying that uh, it's vague as far as the maker fares. Well, yeah, they had some local ones for now. Yeah. Um. Okay, so we got that one. I'm going to just do these one at a time. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a cool build, Popeye. How's the boat going? How's summer? Getting out on the lake? Don't forget the rubber feet as well. Right. Okay. Get these bands on. This one's really on there. Warren was saying maybe the only problem with the sit standing desk conversion is the level changes. I think that would be an interesting interesting problem to, to solve. I think especially if you did it electronically, because like a lot of those standing desks, you know, they move up and down with a remote control. Yeah, let's talk about that because that, that has crossed my mind more than one time about how you would do a uh, adjustable height desk to go from standing to sitting. Um, you see a lot of inexpensive standing desks, so it's almost like you hate to recreate that if you can get it pretty inexpensive. But, um, you know, I, th I don't know. What do you guys think? How might you tackle that? I've seen some that are pneumatic, some that are crank or, uh, you know, threaded screw kind of things, hydraulics maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Crank would be interesting. Like, I wonder if we could use the tube inserts with like a threaded rod and like some crank system. That'd be super cool to to try and figure out. Yeah, I'd like to do more of those kind of engineering challenges. <laughs> Preferably not with the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, but I'm sure we could phone a friend on that. Yeah, I think live streams would be a good place to do that kind of problem solving really i think so i think it'd be fun i mean it would definitely be a longer a longer um live stream but i, I mean getting the community input and problem solving would be a lot of fun I'd, um i just feel such on the spot to try to solve that problem on a live stream you know true but maybe we could do it together i don't know got some creative folks a lot of creativity in the community, which we are very grateful for. 
you guys make some really cool stuff. Okay, I've got three down, one more. They're looking pretty good. Ax Axel said use linear actuators. Yeah, for sure. That would be great. How much do those go for? I, I have this impression that they're fairly expensive, but that would make things simple. Just have it all electric. I think it was a, what was I researching? It was a, uh, a pop out for a camper. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess RVs, you use linear actuators, I think. Or maybe it was hydraulics. I can't remember. Hmm. But they were pretty inexpensive from an RV store. I've thought a lot about this problem. Yeah, there, there's one for like 40 bucks on Amazon. I don't have any idea if that would be the right one for what we would need it for. But cause there's also some really expensive ones. So Right. I think it depends on how, f I mean, the travel of the actual... But you know, I I would love I would love to see too, and and tell me if you guys are with this. But a a homemade linear actuator because we've got the threaded rod. I mean, that's basically what a linear actuator is: is a motor driving a rod and expanding it. And that's what Warren mentioned: doing a full threaded pipe uh, travel up and down with servos. Yeah, something like that would be, or like a stepper motor would be really cool. I think that would work out pretty good. Um, Okay. And something similar too, we, we were doing the, the simulator. Um, we were thinking about adding motion to it and people used like truck, like pickup truck, um, windshield wiper motors, windshield wiper motors. Yeah. So I used to work at a salvage yard. We sold those all the time. They're like 30 bucks. So it could be a cheap solution. It's amazing how, how strong they are. Mm -hmm. Like they have to have a lot of torque. That's not a good angle. You guys can't see that. Okay, let's go overhead. So I'm just going to attach these as straight as I can. Put some torque on there. Elena's working on DIY trade show trusses for decor decorative trusses. Uh, we're searching for conduit connectors. So there's probably a need for similar applications. Nice. Yeah, definitely um, share. You know, once you once you get it finished, and definitely share it with us. We're, we're happy to share it and uh, try to reach those other people that you're saying that might need the application as well. Yeah, that that I'd love to see more trusses. I know it's really connector intensive. You know, you, you use a lot of connectors doing that, but to see how much a conduit truss with some connectors could withstand would be really interesting. Okay, we've got three, the last leg. Oh, nice, all the bolts lined up on the outside. Love that. And two, Popeye mentioned uh, a little bit ago that he, he's using it for winter as the main design for his boat cover. Um, but since it's so easy to do, it takes about five minutes to put up and down. Um, oh, five minutes to take down, maybe a little bit more to put it back up. Um, but you see, label the parts to make it easier. That's cool. Nice. All right. This is super sturdy. Oh, jeez. Sorry. This is super sturdy, guys. Check that out. That is a neat design. I love that. Really cool. Uh, but it's it's got some heft to it, for sure. Um, and there you go. So, uh, now I said I was going to put caps on it, but we've got, um, you know, we've got the shrink wrap already wrapped in, so I'm not even going to put caps. Don't even technically need feet, but for the heck of it, let's put some feet on here. That is upside down. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to um, brainstorm ideas like that. Yeah, Ken said they're pretty cheap on eBay. We probably shouldn't try to make our own servos. 
<laughs> I know. I'm just sometimes uh, don't know when enough DIY is enough. Okay. There we go. All right. I think uh, moment of truth here. Start with the, the pan. It's got a little bit of rock in it, I think. Okay. First, we got the pan. Oh. Pan fits. Pan fits. So far, so good. Let's grab the plant. And the plant fits. Fits great. How cool. I am stoked on this. I really like that. There's the, well, you're seeing a whole lot of plant, aren't you? That's focusing on the leaves. You mean to uh, get the camera and back up like you did? Uh, I'm going to back up. Okay. There we go. It's a little bit bigger than, than need, but it also fits pretty good on, on the sides. There's not much room on the lip of the planter as well. Um, and it looks cool. All right, let me, let me back up so you can get a better look at it. Nice. Does it look like a coffee or a <laughs> cookie tin? <laughs> uh, I can't tell it's a cookie tin. I probably wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have shown the sticker on the bottom. There's the bottom. Nice. And the top. Yeah, it looks really cool. Nice. Yeah, I All think right. it, I think it turned out great. <laughs> yes. We did it. What do you guys think? Thanks so much for sticking with us and your confidence uh, <laughs> in us. Uh, yeah, we, we did it. What do you guys think? I think it looks great. And a couple things, too. Off the topic of the plant stand, but back to the actuator. Ken said he's seeing a couple for 12 actuators for about 35 bucks, 30, 60 bucks, somewhere around there. Um, and also, Popeye has a way off topic question, he says, but no worries at all. We love answering questions. Uh, what's a good clip to hold shade cloth to the conduit? Need to put up some sunblock for part of my garden. Oh, right on. Who asked that? Was uh, it Popeye? Popeye. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's dive into that one. We got the build done. Thanks for sticking with me on that. I'm stoked on that. It's going right on my kitchen table. And the thing I think is cool is... Uh, I mean, you know, as like most DIY <laughs> things, right? You can make it your own. So if you want to change the dimensions or make it multi-tier, you can do that. But that's sturdy. And Ken said we can shoot some bottle rockets out of each of the corners next year for the fourth. Yes. You know, I need the trick on how to light four bottle rockets at the same time. I was trying to light two bottle rockets at the same time <laughs> this 4th of July. They got hairy. But, uh, okay. All right, let's put that aside. I'm proud of that. I don't want to put it under the table. Okay. So the question is, how do you attach shade cloth? Um, so we, we've seen, I mean, the first step, right, is like check out the, the community. Can, can you think of any off the top of your head, Jake, as I far as I think it depends on how heavy the, the sunshade's going to be. I mean, I know you said you're using it for garden so i mean it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be like the plastic but i know those plastic clips are a great option you know like the pvc ones if it's a kind of a lighter material right uh, and, and i was going to mention writer's method yeah yeah writer had a cool method this is uh, actually a retractable sunshade so he ran these uh cables attached to the pipe with carabiners and he was able to slide this on and off not too much shade, but really cool concept. I see that quite often. We got Ryder's method. That's all I'm getting. Um, you know, of course, I've seen grommets and zip ties. Patio shade. I 
how did uh, Randy Randy attach his? Do you remember? Here's one um, that was zip tied, and also it was zip tied on the back side, and then on the front side was I'm trying to remember. I think strung through mm. a sewn opening uh, from Steve. Look at a couple other ones. Randy? Oh, Chris said to use the, the ball bungee cords. Oh, right. Yep. Now now I'm thinking about that. Steve did that too on one side. Oh, and that w that's what... Randy did as well. He used the ball bungee cords, which let's go shopping. There's a whole heap of them for 12 bucks. Typical Amazon. But yeah, Randy's Randy used the ball bungee cords and then the um the other cool thing is the, I don't know if these would work, but the snap um, greenhouse snap clamps. Probably one inch is what you want. That'd be pretty close to conduit. Uh, so something like this, which would trap the shade cloth inside, in between the pipe and uh, these clamps. Normally, you can use them for greenhouses. They're pretty common uh, for attaching plastic. But if you oversized them a little bit, uh, I'm sure you could put shade cloth and in there. And they have there. different colors, too, so you might be able to get, like, they have the black ones, but you might get lucky and match your sunshade color. Right. But some have these brass clips, and those are interesting. They have the, uh, they're like a, like a chip bag <laughs> clip. Um, you know, and, I, and we had that question about how to attach fabric. It was um, it was a flag, I think, on a conduit frame. That would have been decent if you could use that for a flag. You might not want to wrap your flag under that. But yeah, good question, Popeye. Let me check out. I appreciate you being in here, Popeye. Let's take a look at Popeye's build. It's really cool. That was before, out of PVC. And then um, he's got this uh, beautiful boat here, and then here's his structure that he made uh, to winterize. This was neat. And then, oh, this was, oh yeah, Popeye. This is really cool, guys. Uh, so to stretch a canvas or a tarp over this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Popeye, but but this is a golf ball with a, a piece of wood, and that goes inside of the conduit in these corners so that it, it doesn't tear the tarp. I thought that was super smart, Popeye. That was a great hack. We need to tell people about that. Yeah, we'll have to use that one in our next hack roundup. Yeah, and then the brazed washer onto a piece of conduit to mount it to the uh, these mounting points on his deck. So, yeah, there's Popeye's build. Thanks for hanging out tonight, Popeye. Really appreciate that. Any other questions, any other topics you guys want to chat about before we shut this thing down? Love to hear your questions. And, and thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in and sticking with me as I built this. <laughs> Uh, thing this evening. It was really a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had so much fun doing the live streams. Yeah, and uh, to build this at the end, which came out really cool. I am, like I, I've said. And you could change the color. You don't have to use the black shrink wrap. You know, if you wanted to do the different colored shrink wrap and customize a little bit more, you can do that too. Right. Get some more shots of that. Okay, well, I think that's I think that's it, everybody. Um, Thanks, everybody, again, for sticking with us, for checking out the live stream tonight, hanging out and building with this. We've got, uh, you know, we want to keep doing these. Uh, hit us up with ideas on what else we could build. 
on the table before we get the full uh, setup done and what else you'd like to see from us. Uh, we really enjoy this. As, as always, community is super important uh, from the beginning. We love your feedback. Uh, we really appreciate your creativity. And uh, we do this every Wednesday night, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have a free moment on Wednesdays, come back by and, and chat with us. Really had a good time. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around, hanging out. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have Thank a good you. night.